Hi, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. Welcome to our sixth and final episode of Maintaining Adaptive Capacity Series. My name is Shane McNally, Marketing Specialist at R3 Continuum, and joining us today, also with R3 Continuum, is our Vice President of Clinical Crisis Response, Jeff Gorder. Thank you for being with us today, Jeff. Over the thank course you. of this series, we have been discussing different levels of fatigue that impact the leader's adaptive capacity. In today's episode, we'll be discussing how you can cultivate and maintain that adaptive capacity. So let's get it started here. Throughout the whole series, uh, we've covered decision fatigue, uh, compassion fatigue, virtual environment fatigue, and cumulative fatigue. All levels of fatigue have consequential impact on leaders' ability to maintain adaptive capacity. And over the course of 2020, with COVID-19 pandemic, civil unrest, among other organizational stressors, we're seeing these fatigues have major impact. So Jeff, what are some specific strategies that leaders can employ to enhance their ability to maintain adaptive capacity as we continue through 2020 and the unknown challenges we may still face? Great. Thank you, Shane. Yes. No. And, and an excellent question, because it's one thing to identify what the challenges are now to move ahead and say, what can we do about it? The first one that I'd like to identify is simply taking a deep breath and be patient with yourself and with others. Give yourself a bit of grace. Recognize that what we are facing here is something utterly new. This is something we have not faced as a nation for over a hundred years to this size, scope, and duration. And so we are all doing simply the best we can in responding to an unfamiliar and new situation. I think the key here takeaway is progress, not perfection. Progress, not perfection. Give yourself a bit of a break. Be patient with yourself and others and recognize that we are all trying our best to respond to the situation. I think as we talked about in earlier sessions, you want to have an environment in which it is safe to fail. And by that, I mean it's safe to try something with the recognition we're not going to hit the ball out of the park every time in every circumstance. You want to create an environment in which your team feels it's safe to innovate, to try, to adapt, to be curious, to be creative, to come up with new solutions that, again, positions your organization for forward movement that makes you stronger at the end of this and not just limping your way to the finish line. And so being patient with ourselves um, is, is, a, uh, is, is a good foundational attitude to begin with. Next, we want to lean into the narrative, which is another way of saying, you know, while we did not choose this global crisis, what we do with it, how we respond to it is up to us. This is our moment. For those of you who, uh, who are history buffs, you recognize that throughout history throughout the millennia, human history is characterized by situations in which we have been challenged with, faced with circumstances that are just incredibly daunting, incredibly challenging, and yet we have risen to the occasion. We wouldn't be here today if we hadn't been successful in adapting to those challenges, whether it's world wars, whether it's um, previous pandemics, whether it's mass migrations or mass extinctions, we have faced challenges before. And so I, I, again, I don't, I don't minimize that or dismiss it, but I recognize that this is our time. How we respond to this is our story. What that looks like is up to us. And as you inspire your team to rise to this challenge, rise to the moment, recognize that there is power in purpose. There's power and purpose that the meaning you attribute to this by being able to rally your team and say, listen, this is what we're going to do in response to, to COVID-19. This is how we are handling it. And we are stronger together. And we can do this by, by helping them identify the meaning and purpose of what they are doing. It is empowering and helps them be able to reframe and re, reposition the challenges as challenges that are not insurmountable, but ones that we are, we take some pride, some satisfaction, some affirmation in being able to rise to the occasion and in fact, rise above the occasion. 
Next, I think for leaders to seek outside input is critical. The reality is that um, like a pond, if a, if a pond, a body of water receives no fresh input of water, no spring, no, no fresh runoff of rain or snow melt, it quickly becomes stagnant. And so I think the same concept applies here to leadership. Seek outside input, reach out to those who are um, mentors, who are co-workers, who are peers in outside organizations, being able to say, what are you doing? How are you handling it? What have you come up with? Sharing your concerns and being able to get new ideas and new input of, of suggestions um, keeps the spring fresh. And also, it puts you in a position to give back, to be able to be that supportive input, that creative outlet for others, for your colleagues and co, uh, co-workers in other organizations, being able to, to uh, share with them your insights and your creativity at a time when it's most needed. Next, you want to engage your team in the process. It's somewhat similar, but recognize that this is not all up to you. So often leaders in a position of crisis will say, I alone can solve this, as if all the weight of it rests on your shoulders. Tap into your deep bench. Recognize that you've hired a a leadership team. You've hired individuals to help support you and empower you in your decision making. And so being able to um, tap into that team um, not only expands the creativity and the input, but it also gives them ownership in the process. People are much more likely to invest in and follow through on a plan that they had some ownership in, some say in, some ability to influence. And that by engaging your team, you're much more likely to get buy-in at every level. And then finally, on a personal note, commit to aggressive caretaking. Again, so for so many leaders, taking care of themselves is an afterthought. I'll get to it when I have time. If I've got a moment, yeah, I'll take a break. And the trouble is there's never that moment. There's always something else calling for your attention, screaming for your time, draining you of that energy. And so being able to take care of yourself, um, holding it uh scheduling it and holding it sacred in the same way that you wouldn't blow off a customer meeting, that you wouldn't blow off um, a a leadership uh, summit where you wouldn't, you know, you you would hold those kinds of meetings as so important that they are not a matter of negotiation. I'm not going to blow this one off. Invest in the same way in your self-care engage in black out specific times where you engage in things that are filling for you, that fill your bucket, that encourage you, that help keep you buoyant, whether it's time away, whether it's time with friends, whether it's time with family, whether it's engaging in in faith-based or meditative activities, whatever it is that works for you. All I'm saying is that book it, schedule it, hold it sacred. Don't allow anything else to take over that time. Otherwise, self-care will just simply never happen. And again, if we're running on empty, we don't. if you don't have it to give, you're not gonna be able to support your team. Putting yourself on the calendar, building self-care in as a regular practice that, uh, that you commit to with the same intensity you do other business goals. And the term, just to clarify, the term aggressive caretaking is not aggressive in that sort of angry attacking sort of sense, but think aggressive as in other healthcare settings. If I were recovering from surgery um, or recovering from an illness, my physician would say, we're going to put you on an aggressive regime of self-care. We're going to have physical therapy three times a week. We're going to have specific medications at regular intervals at specific times, and you need to commit to it. Anybody who's ever faced a health challenge like that knows that recovery is dependent upon that kind of aggressive caretaking and commitment to self-care. The same applies to us now 
as we are running the marathon of COVID-19. Those are some great strategies, Jeff. Thank you for sharing those with us. Um, if a leader is seeking help um, that they do not feel they can get through normal support channels, what recommendations do you have for them um, or organizational leadership looking to provide support for their leadership teams? Well, as one of the ones uh, th that we identified, number three, the seeking outside input, I think that our three continuum stands ready to support those leaders as a source of external input, as a, a, a an organization that provides the evaluative services so you can clearly understand what is my organization going through? How are they responding? What is the well-being of my key my key uh, performers? Uh, the crisis response services, in which trained behavioral health professionals are able to bring support either on site for the workforce that has returned to to work, or telephonically, or through virtual enhanced means, as a way to again restore the cohesion and camaraderie of those groups and help them be able to process what this has meant for them. The executive optimization is clear, targeted, specific, high-level consultation that helps executives be able to determine what the next right steps for them and their organization may be. And then finally, protective services, of course, providing for the safety and managing the risk as organizations are returning, returning to a changed environment whether it's uh, returning to, to work, whether it's returning to work following a reduction in force, whatever the situation may be, making sure that security is first and foremost job one for any organization. Excellent, thank you so much for, for sharing everything with me today and throughout this whole entire series. Um, we know how to cultivate and maintain adaptive capacity and we also know resources for supporting leaders who may be struggling with some or all of the fatigues we discussed throughout the whole entire series. Um, to obtain more information on how you can cultivate and maintain adaptive capacity or to view a, all of the other episodes of this video series, visit our website at r3c.com slash adaptive capacity. And if you are in need of support during these challenging times, R3 Continuum can help. Connect with us. Thanks for watching. Thank you all.